If you guys want to be truly serious about speed running, then upgrading your electronics is one of the best things that you can do. And that starts with the transmitter and the receiver. In this video, I show you guys exactly which transmitter and receiver I went with, as well as a gyroscope in case I want to use it. I have that option and how I got everything hooked up and connected. Really special thanks to James McCoy and Raj Schifrin for helping me out, walking through different things that I need to think about before ultimately making my decision. It's trying to start up. It's like it's not getting enough juice. Hey, what's up you guys? Josh here with the RC Recon channel. And today I've got a couple updates for the car to help it with reception, with connectivity between the transmitter and the receiver. And I've got a couple things to unbox here. And as soon as I unbox that, you're gonna see exactly what we've got in the mail coming here soon, uh, but all part of the same video. I did go ahead and swap out the old smaller receiver box for this larger one. And there was enough room behind it where I could still fit that and uh, clearly there's plenty of room for the motor, but inside of this box, well, let's just go ahead and open it. All right, so I've got two things here. First is this Futaba six channel receiver. This is actually, uh, according to Ross Schifrin, a aircraft or an aircraft receiver. Uh, like I said, R206GS. So R2006GS. Uh, yeah, for aircraft models, but we're going to use it in the vehicle here. And depending on how long those receiver wires are, I might take the receiver wires off of the old receiver that I had, uses the same plug, pop them on there. I'll show you guys how to do that. And then I also have, because this doesn't have a built-in gyro, a gyro from Futaba. This is GYC441. And... Of course, with these two things in the mail, it's pretty obvious by now that I have a Futaba transmitter coming in. I think it's called the 7PXR. Um, not cheap whatsoever, but with the help of James McCoy and Ross Schifrin, they both believe that the transmitter and the receiver that I was using is actually causing some pulsing with the motor. So whenever I try to get on throttle, you can look at the logs and see that it's like going up and then down and then up and then down. It's not very smooth. No matter what I do with the trigger pull, um, it's not a smooth run. And I even went and bought a new perfect pass module, installed that, and then I had it on the bench here and I was giving it throttle and you can actually hear the motor even with perfect pass, which should be a linear pull you can hear the motor go up in pitch. And actually, I have a video of that. I'll go ahead and insert that right here. So, I believe with these upgrades and that new transmitter, we're gonna be able to really smooth out a lot of that input from not only the throttle, but the steering, quick corrections. This gyroscope should be a lot better than what's built into you know that $10 receiver. So, I'm really excited about that. Like I said, it's all gonna be part of this same video. So as soon as I get that in the mail, I'll pop that in this video. But for now, I'm going to get both of these fully unboxed and then show you exactly how to wire up this gyro to the receiver uh, because you have to connect them together, probably shorten the wires a little bit, and then get all of it to fit inside of here. Now, I'm not sure if there is a bind button on this. That might be what that button is there, but I want to make sure that I can get to the bind button if there is one. Um, the way I'm not installing this prior to actually getting the transmitter all hooked up. All right, so in this box here, pops open easy enough. All right, there we go. And yeah, these antennas aren't very long at all. So this is supposed to be a 2.4 gigahertz wire. And essentially that's what these are supposed to be as well, but my understanding is this exposed part is supposed to be 30 millimeters. So that would be three centimeters here. And yep, I mean, just about. Same thing on this one. These are much shorter. These are just tw 20 millimeters. Interesting, very interesting. All right, so we will be popping the, this open carefully, of course and swapping out those plugs for these here. So let me 
wash my hands real quick because I've been messing with some mineral spirits, getting some things cleaned up, and then I'll come back real quick. All right, let's see if I can get this popped open here. Okay, top comes off. There we go. You guys might be able to hear the rain picking up. There's that one. And actually, I'm going to get rid of these plastic pieces here. Came off the other receiver. So yeah, these would be a little bit longer. Not as long as we really want them to be, but it's going to be better than what was on here stock. There we go. There's one and the other. We'll get both of those to fit right back in that spot there so that this can slide over. There we go. That's it. It's back into place. All right. So now those are much longer. Some warranty information. And between this receiver and that gyro is about a hundred bucks, if not a little bit more. Usage and precautions. So I'll familiarize myself with this. If there's anything of note, I'll let you guys know, and then I'll get that unboxed. Okay, so there is an easy link button. That's where that SW is, right there. Push that in order to link it. So you turn the transmitter on, just like several other you know linking. Uh, procedures. Turn the transmitter on within 20 inches, turn on the receiver, and then press and hold the easy link button for approximately two seconds and then release it. As long as that turns uh, solid green for that LED, then it's linked. Also, while the other receiver I had was capable of up to 8 volts, and that's what I had set up in the ESC, this one has a range of 4.8 to 7.4, so I will have to go and set that to 7.4 in the castle link. Something else to note is you can see the antennas, they actually want you to put it at a 90 degree angle from one another. And a couple of the examples here is, I mean, totally different directions, right? And then another example is they're kind of following each other and then at the end they, they switch. So I can either have two antennas coming out of the top of the motor or the receiver box and then split or I can do kind of what I had before and have one going down the side uh, of the body like this, pointing this way, and then the other one straight up. So I have a couple options. You know, I'll decide what I want to do. All right, now for the gyro. Uh, box opens up the same way. There's that. Got some zip ties, so that's nice. Limited warranty and service center. Now the information for the gyro itself. All right, so you can see they also provide a couple of double-sided sticky tape or pads the gyro itself, which they provide two, I guess, to uh, in case you mess up. This is the tool to adjust, or since we're using a Futaba transmitter, we should be able to adjust it within the remote. We've got two little dials in here. I can get focused. Two switches in here, a dial here, and then all the connections here. So let me show you guys exactly how to set that up. Now they do give us two longer uh, cords here. Now I will probably cut this down. All right, so as we can see here, up on this switch, right where my left thumb is, is normal gyro. And if it seems to be opposite whenever you test it on the vehicle, just flip that down to reverse it. And then SR mode for the servo down is on, up is off. Now SR mode, SR mode is a specific setting with the servo itself. And I think most of the servos that I use, if well, if not all of them, most servos will 
most people use don't have an SR mode, so I'm gonna leave that off. All right, so unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to do this kind of stacked setup because as soon as I put it into the vehicle where these plugs are, they end up being right at the top of where that where the lid will go on. So had to scrape out these side pieces in here and I'm actually gonna have these set in here side by side. I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. All right, so as you can see here, we have the diagram for the wiring. Steering servo, steering servo goes to the one on the left, which is SX. Gain will go to channel three on your receiver and then RX will go to the steering channel, channel one on the receiver. So that's how it's laid out. And I had to do a little bit of modification because my servo wires were a little bit too short. So I added a wire loom uh, all the way up where the sensor wire connects to the motor. Then I added an access port right there so that the steering servo can go into the proper channel. So you can see right there, steering servo comes into SX. And just gotta make sure that that is plugged down all the way. It looks like it's crooked, but that's because it doesn't have that little tab, that particular connector. So then I have the middle one gain going to number three, and then RX going to steering number one. Now, I do have to make an adjustment on the XLX2, so I'll do that and you know, of course, connect it to Castle Link with this one and keep the aux wire unplugged while I do that. And then finally, we'll have the perfect pass. Um, we'll have to, of course, recalibrate once we get the new transmitter in the mail. But yeah, it's, it looks really complicated, but just take your time. Or if you're going to copy this, you know, follow this video and you'll be all right. All right, so last quick little update. Um, right now I've just got this wire hanging out so I can easily connect it to the uh, castle link. But just wanted to show what this is gonna end up looking like. You see some glue here from having these wires come out through the, through the top here. And that was really because of the alignment of the hole that I drilled in the body. It wasn't in the right spot being over here with the other receiver. And then also this receiver, um, I don't remember where it used to be. I think it was actually over here and it wouldn't work there, so yeah, don't have a spot for the antenna over there. But I did go ahead and decide to do perpendicular like I had the other one. I really had no issues whatsoever with the reception, and I'm really hoping that that is the same case here. Perpendicular like the instructions say, so hopefully this will work. Only downside is when I take the screws out and take this off, I've gotta feed these wires out through the holes through these tubes in order to take this off. But hopefully I shouldn't have to do that too often. Hey, what's up you guys? So the transmitter just showed up, but I am still waiting on the battery and the charger for the battery for this transmitter. So it's supposed to be, it was supposed to arrive today, but it seems like it's gonna be late. So let's go ahead and just get this unboxed. And then when the battery shows up, I'll get it charged up and we'll get this linked to the existing receiver that we just put in the car. All right, there we go. So there it is, the T7PXR. T7PXR, 7PXR, you get it. All right, there's that and nothing else in the box. Cool. This is pretty nice. I'm excited, $700 radio, kind of ridiculous, but yeah, want the best, you know, and hopefully this will last me years upon years. So, looks like it is not taped down, so just opens right up. There's that, and we'll slide the box out. Hopefully, yep, there we go. Okay, right up top, short manual. <laughs> this thing's huge. Okay, what else we got in here? Um, film, I think that'll protect the uh, screen. And then a bunch of these little SR stickers. I wonder what that's for, but 
I'm going to read through all that. We've got a couple pieces here where if we want to drop down the position of the wheel, we can do that. Or go with a bigger wheel. I think the smaller wheel is already attached. All right, so a couple plugs here. I'm not sure what they provide those for. And some additional screws and things. I'll look into that, see what all that's about. Whoops. And one more little plate here. Oh, you know, I wonder if those are used to uh, help move the buttons down if you're gonna use that drop down. We'll see. All right, so here's the receiver it comes with. I'm not gonna be using that right now because we have that other one. And then finally, the transmitter. Oh yeah, it feels good. Does it feel like $700? Well, <laughs> so far, no, it doesn't feel that expensive, but you know, it may all be within the system itself uh, and all that, so yeah. Of course, I can't share anything until I have the battery and I'm gonna read up on what all this entails. Oh cool, so actually I could have went ahead and used it with the double A's. I did not know that it came with that. So that's good to know, at least you guys know that. Well, I'm still gonna wait, cause I'm gonna have the LiPo come in the mail, I might as well use it since I paid for it. But yeah, then I'll turn it on, get it all set up, and I'll show you guys what that looks like, especially the linking process. So it's gonna be another day for me, but for you, it'll be right about now. All right, you guys, so for this part, I'm sorry about the bad angle, but it was getting cold out in the garage, so brought this in. Just got the charger for the uh, transmitter and the battery in the mail. So see, we have an accessories pack here, and that's everything in there. Battery, so I'm gonna put, you know, all the links to everything I bought down in the description. So you guys, you know, if you wanna purchase all of this, you can. But this is what the battery looks like. FT2F1700BV2. So this is a Life E battery, L-I-F-E. Uh, it's still a lithium polymer ba battery though, so normal light bulb. And this should fit right into the bottom of the transmitter, of course. And in here, all right, just some foam. We've got the charger. Open this up. And you can either charge from the bottom here or actually no yeah that's that's how you charge it so you plug this in the bottom charges it up i think they do have some kind of charger where you can actually plug it directly into the transmitter i don't know if that is going to be possible with this or not um, i guess we can certainly try that uh, limiting warranty and then instruction manual we'll have uh, hopefully our language here somewhere but it's just there we go Essentially, it's just going to say, you know, be careful, don't overcharge it, normal operation, abnormal operation. Yeah, self-explanatory, plug it in, lights up, green, charging, all that stuff. Now here, what else we got in here? These are, looks like some foam pads you can put inside of the transmitter to take up the space from the battery, so it's not just flopping around in there. And we've got the instruction manual for that. So safety precautions, danger, don't do this, that, and the other, charge and discharge. So please charge the full before you use it for the first time. Use the Life U battery charger. Do not leave the battery charging. Do not leave the battery charging. So don't leave it while it's charging. Do not leave it in a fully charged state. Uh, but yeah, let's actually Bring the transmitter over. Again, I'm, I'm really sorry for the bad camera angle. Um, of course, naturally it plugs in right into the bottom here. And then see if it takes up all of the space in here or not. You're definitely gonna want it like this. Yeah, 
Okay, the space seems to be kind of limited, so I may not use those pads. We'll just slide the cover on as it is, and yeah, it's not rocking around in there. I'm gonna go ahead and get this charged up, and then we will get the transmitter linked to the receiver box. All right, you guys, so I've got the battery in the transmitter now. Let's see if we can get this linked up appropriately. <clears throat> so, if I understand the instructions, I'll make sure I can reach in here and press that button. All right, perfect. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and power this on. And we'll go to menu, linkage, receiver. We know this is an SFHSS. We'll go yes. And hey, I guess we gotta turn the car on, right? <laughs> Plug it in. Power on the car. Okay, so it is linked and okay, everything is reversed at the moment. So um, we need to adjust some settings here because our steering is reversed and the gyro is on, um, but I don't know if the gyro is linked. Let's go back here. Need to go to channel reverse. And let me actually shut the car off for a second. Um, steering and throttle was reversed. So we're going to reverse both of those. Then we'll go home. Sorry if you guys can't see the transmitter okay. Now we will actually try to calibrate with the ESC. So we go full throttle and actually, yeah, so it's reading. I'm gonna go full throttle, power it on. Full reverse, neutral. Steering is correct now. Okay, forward work, reverse works. You can hear the drag brake is working, so that's good. Um, the last thing here would be our gyro, which is going to be channel three. And I'm not sure which button. That's channel four. That's our throttle trim. That's our steering trim. So that is gyro there. So if we turn that up. Perfect. So let me show the front wheels here. If I shift the car to the left, you'll see it. Correct. And let me actually turn this up by quite a bit, so you can see. Very quick, too. And extremely smooth to recenter, so that's great. Great to see. Now, I do need to set endpoints so we're not oversteering. Um, actually, I can do that now. So let me turn the gyro back down. Um, 30's fine. Go menu, linkage, endpoint. So, steering endpoints. Went that way down. How far over? And now, lastly, now that we have the transmitter calibrated, we want to adjust our perfect pass. So, we're going to turn this off. 
And then down in here where we've got the perfect pass installed, I'm just gonna turn this up to where we are about at seven seconds or so. We wanna go ahead and test it out. See if perfect pass is working appropriately. Nothing's touching the drive line, so we're good there. Power that back on. Steering works. Gyro is working. We'll give it a little bit of throttle. So when I give full throttle, it doesn't do it right away. And then it kicks in. So now let's see if perfect pass will gradually build up the throttle. Yes, so quite a bit. We might actually increase that to about eight or nine seconds, but that worked out fantastically. Everything's working. And you know, I can actually hear a difference in the ESC. The loudness of the beat, the idle beat, um, is louder. The smoothness of the throttle just now was uh, seemed smoother than when I had the other receiver. The ESC boots up faster. Um, the gyro is definitely better than the other one I had. I could tell that right off the bat. And the steering seems to be much more responsive. Um, now you shouldn't normally do that, but I just wanted to see how responsive that was. I'm really happy with this upgrade, guys. I know it was expensive, but I'm hoping with the connection, the connectivity, the smoothness of the throttle, everything, um, the better gyro, I may use the gyro, may not, but you know, we'll do some testing once, uh, <laughs> once the weather gets a little bit better, but I'm really happy that everything is working out, uh, really, really well. So that's really going to conclude this quick update, you know, getting this installed and set up. I didn't have to change any switches with the gyro, uh, but you know, of course, because of the servo location and the motor location, I did have to switch around. Um, you know, I had to reverse the throttle and the steering. But yeah, if you have any questions, definitely let me know. I'm going to learn more about the transmitter uh, as I use it. So if you guys have questions, I'll try to find those answers for you. But otherwise, I appreciate everyone watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.